Hello, and welcome back. This video is about setting up the base enemy actor class. And a special thanks to all my supporters. Thank you for helping me help others. So before we get to the enemy stuff, a minor correction from the previous video. I did edit in some uh, overlay text, but this is what I meant. For the input here, we also need distance, which is a float. And it just goes in there. All right, so for the enemy, we're first going to create a new C++ class. Um, so a pawn is basically just an actor that can be possessed and have some input from a controller. That can be AI or a player. An actor is an object that's placed in the world. Um, for the tower and player, technically I could have used an actor in those cases. Uh, we may get to a point where possession makes sense. Uh, but for the enemy, we're going to go with actor. So for this, I'm just going to call it enemy actor. Create the class. Let Unreal do what it does. Don't click that yet. All right, so with that done, we will then just close. I'm going to pop that back there. The editor. Wait for the red to go away. And hit reload. So for the enemy actor header file, this is the fresh actor subclass. It just has a constructor, begin, play, and tick. I'm going to replace all this. Go back up here. So what we've added is ability system interface. And then the public eye ability system interface here. For this, as a reminder, we need this function to be defined. So we have that down here. We added post initialize components just to initialize the ability system component. And then we're adding a status mesh, uh, the ability system component, and the enemy set that we built in a previous video. In our enemy actor CPP, we are including the ability system component, not interface, our TD enemy set, and then we're creating our status mesh component, the ability system component, and enemy set all effectively created the same way. In our getAbilitySystem component, we just return our variable. And PostInitialize is just calling the super version and init ability actor info, setting along this and this for the owner and avatar. So with that done, we'll hit F7, make sure there's no build errors, and then launch into the editor. And I'll see you there. All right, in the editor, we're going to go into our gas folder. I'm going to create a new gameplay effect. So similar to our tower attributes, we're going to create an enemy attributes. So in here, we want this as instant. We're going to have three modifiers. Open all these up. I'll set them all to override. For the attributes, we have our health, max health, and move speed. So down here we have move speed. Up here you might want to put health and then max health. The problem is if I have health, max health, these things are set in order. So we have some code in C++ that clamps the health to the max health. So if we set our health here to a value higher than our max health, what's going to happen is the value will get set to what our default max health was, which I believe is 10, even though we set this to like 100 or whatever. Uh, and then max health will get set to that 100 value, and you'll have 10 over 100 instead of the 100, 100 you expect. So you want to just ensure that you do max health before health. So for each of these, I'll set this to set by caller. And the way that works is it's based on a data tag. So in here, we click that. We, we hit the plus here. I'm going to call this enemy dot move speed dot set by caller. Choose a source. Hit add, add new tag and then select it. So that's what that one looks like. 
for the max health. Similarly, hit plus, do enemy dot health dot set by caller. And I can use that same tag up here. So then in our blueprints, I'm going to create a folder here, just call it enemies. Create a blueprint based on our enemy actor. I'm going to call this one BP underscore enemy base. And I'm going to leave all this alone for now in our event craft under our begin play. We're going to drag out our ability sys component. I want to make outgoing spec. We choose our gameplay effect, which is enemy attributes. That creates our gameplay effect spec handle structure. Using that, we can call assign tag set by caller magnitude. So then here we're going to choose our enemy health set by caller. We can duplicate this over here. Set up the other tag as move speed set by caller. We need to make sure that the gameplay effect spec handle structure is dragged into the next one. And then lastly, we will, we will be calling by gameplay effect spec to self. And dragging in the spec handle here. All right, so for the health and the move speed, these are attributes, but we are going to also use variables for initial health, which will be a float, and initial move speed. I'm going to compile so that we can set the default variables for these. I'm just gonna set move speed to 150 and health to 100. And then we can drag these in here. So with that done, I'm just gonna compile. I'm gonna go into our tower. And I will copy this printed code over here. Just change this text. Health. Max health and move speed. Similarly, need to change these. Health, max health, and move speed. This duration is set to zero, even though it's not in tick, that's fine. We'll look at it in the log. So with that done, then I need to drag in the enemy. I'll just throw that in here. It doesn't have a mesh right now, so it's just in the level like that. Hit play. I'm gonna stop, go into our output log. And you can see health is set to 100, max health the same, and move speed set to 150 as expected. Lastly, I'm going to add a function which we'll use later called advance. So the idea here is that advance is called to move this enemy along the spline. So for that, it's going to get sent a delta. This will be delta seconds from the tick function. So we're going to take that delta value, we're going to end up multiplying it 
we want our ability sys component so that we can call get gameplay attribute value. This is our move speed. We'll get, grab from that. We're then going to take that value and we're going to add it to another variable. We'll just call this dist. So dist will track how far along the spine that this uh, enemy exists, where it's placed, located. So we have our dist value. This will initially be set to zero um, as this advanced function is called. Uh, it's being called from tick somewhere, sending along the delta. The delta is being multiplied by the move speed that we set and being added to dist and then being set to dist. So with move speed set to 150 over the period of one second, um, dist will have increased by 150. You might be asking, we have a move speed variable. Why are we using that and an attribute? So the reason is because, well, a few reasons. Uh, first of all, showing the set by caller logic um, using a variable but also because we don't want to have to track this variable for changes in move speed later. That is what the point of using an attribute is, or at least in part. We can use gameplay effects to modify the move speed, and then it will just, it, it's being used here every, every tick, so it's just, it's taken into account. Lastly, I'm just going to add a return node, just so that we can send back this for convenience, and we'll just call this one distance. Thanks for watching. If you liked the video and would like to see more, you know what to do. And if you would like to support this channel, watch these videos two weeks early, or just want to download the project files, you can do so through my Patreon linked below.